Hello, my name is Matt Sarouche, and I'm a board-certified urologist. I'll be speaking today about erectile dysfunction, or ED for short. Erectile dysfunction, or impotence, is the repeated inability to achieve or sustain an erection adequate for sexual intercourse. ED can range from the complete inability to obtain an erection to merely a decrease in the quality of the erection. It is estimated that this affects 15 to 30 million men in this country alone. In older men, ED usually has a physical cause. This can be disease, injury, or side effects of medications. Overwhelmingly, this results from vascular disease or disease of the blood vessels. Diabetes can affect the nerves related to erectile function. Erections begin with mental stimulation or sensory stimulation. Impulses from the brain or local nerves send signals to the penis, which relax the blood vessels, allowing blood to engorge the penis, giving an erection. Diseases such as atherosclerosis, peripheral vascular disease, diabetes, and neurologic disease account for the majority of ED. Lifestyle choices, such as drinking, smoking, and obesity, can increase the risk of ED. Surgery, treating prostate cancer, can also cause ED. Some medications can cause ED as a side effect. Sometimes, psychological factors, such as stress and anxiety, can also lead to ED. In order to evaluate someone for ED, a thorough history and physical exam are required. It is important to explore all the risk factors particularly including side effects of medications. Blood work is important to check for cholesterol, prostate cancer, and even the male hormone testosterone. Treatment needs to consist of a multilateral approach. Issues discovered with the history and physical exam need to be addressed. Lifestyle modifications, especially with sleep and anxiety, should be highlighted. Side effects of medications should be addressed. Once you have considered medical intervention, it is important to understand all of the therapies available. The first-line treatment is generally with oral medical therapy. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors include Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis. These medications first became available in 1998 with the release of Viagra. Levitra and Cialis followed several years later. These medications have a long record of being safe and effective. They function by enhancing the effect of nitric oxide, which relaxes smooth muscle and helps achieve and sustain an erection. These medications work only after sexual stimulation first triggers the release of nitric oxide. Men can use these medications up to once a day. They do not affect libido or the sex drive, which is primarily driven by the male hormone testosterone. Sometimes the pills don't work. In this case, it becomes necessary to consider the alternatives. Generally, these include a vacuum erection device, injection therapy, or a penile implant. A vacuum erection device causes an erection by placing a plastic cylinder around the penis, creating a partial vacuum, and using a handle to pump air out of the cylinder, and thereby drawing blood into the penis, giving an erection. A constriction band is placed at the base of the penis to maintain the erection. The next option is to use medications that dilate the blood vessels directly. The most effective method is to inject the medicine with a small needle. An alternative but less effective method is to place the medicine in the urethra with a plastic applicator. If these therapies do not work, the last and most definitive option is to place a penile prosthesis. While this is the most invasive option, it is also the most definitive in that the patient will get a durable, reproducible result. An implant does require surgery and runs the risk of infection and failure of the procedure. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this discussion informative and helpful.